For this particular question, we can use an ICE table. ICE table standing for initial change equilibrium. The equilibrium reaction that we are considering is given to us as dinitrogen tetroxide decomposing into two nitrogen dioxide molecules. Initially, we have 0.1 atmospheres of nitro dinitrogen tetroxide and no nitrogen dioxide. As the reaction proceeds, 58% uh, to reach equilibrium, 58% of the dinitrogen tetroxide decomposes. So that means we will decrease by 0.58 0.58, the decimal form of 58% of 0.1. And based on the stoichiometry, we're going to increase by 2 times 0.58 times the initial pressure of 0.1. So at equilibrium, we will have the 0.1 minus the 0.58 times 0.1. This will be the final pressure of dinitrogen tetroxide at equilibrium and this will be the final pressure of nitrogen dioxide 2 times 0.58 times 0.1. This all occurred at 298 Kelvin. It now wants us to figure out what the percentage will be at 388 Kelvin. This means that we need to solve for an equilibrium constant at 388 Kelvin. To do that, we need to know what the equilibrium constant is at 298. That resulted in a 58% of dinitrogen tetroxide decomposing. To calculate the equilibrium constant, we can take the final pressure of dinitrogen, I'm sorry, nitrogen dioxide, and put it in the numerator of the equilibrium constant expression and then square that whole thing because we have a coefficient of 2 on nitrogen dioxide. We'll then divide that by the pressure at equilibrium of dinitrogen tetroxide and we get a K value that is equal to 0 0.320. Now we can use this equation which was given to us in the chapter where if we have this value, K1, corresponding to this temperature, this equilibrium constant at this temperature, and then this equilibrium constant at this temperature, we need a negative sign. However, if we have this K value corresponding to this temperature, and this K value corresponding to this temperature, we don't need the negative sign. So I'm going to take the natural log of the K value at 298 divided by the K value at 388 Kelvin, which we don't know. Set that equal to delta H of the reaction in joules. So it'll be the 55.3 kilojoules multiplied by 1,000 gives us 55,300 joules. Divide that by the R value, which is 8.314 joules per Kelvin mole and then multiply that by, so I have this temperature, or this K value corresponding to this temperature over here, this K value corresponding to this temperature, so I think I told you that wrong. If that's the case, we don't need the negative sign, but if I have this K value corresponding to this temperature, as given in the book, we do need the K value, or sorry, the negative sign. So either way you want to write this uh, expression. If you switch these two, you need to add the negative sign back in. And then K2 is going to correspond to this temperature, this one and this one, so we don't need the negative sign. Now we have a single equation with one unknown and we can solve for K2. A little algebra here. All of this is going to be equal to five, negative 5.177. We then subtract this from both sides, and we'll get this. We'll get negative K2 is equal to negative 4.038.
and K2 then becomes 56.7. So now that we know what K2 is, we can set up a second ice table where we have the initial still at 0 0.100 atmospheres of nitro uh, dinitrogen tetroxide and initial pressure of zero for nitrogen dioxide. We will then decrease the pressure of dinitrogen tetroxide by an unknown percentage x of the original amount which will cause this to increase by two times the unknown percentage multiplied by the initial amount. Essentially what I'm doing is I'm solving for this new percentage here as a decimal which I, I don't know right now. Then these will be the final pressures at equilibrium. So now I can, as I did before, take these pressures at equilibrium, put them into the equilibrium constant expression, but instead of solving for K, as I did here, I know what K is, because I just calculated it using this equation down here, I can solve for X. This is now going to require the use of the quadratic formula. So I don't have any space left to show you the quadratic formula, but you can go back and review how to, using algebra, review how to solve this quadratic equation with the quadratic formula. And you should get your x value equal to 0.993. This would then correspond to 99.3%.